Welcome to Hall of Fame right here on City TV with your Shirley AJ Sapon. Here on the show, we invite your favorite personality, sit down, have a conversation with them. And this time I decided, you know what, we're getting so close to Christmas, why not make it a little different? Now on the show, we'll be breaking bread, having a meal or two or three or a lot of dishes, and uh, having some wine to loosen them up, and maybe they will reveal a lot more than they intend to, which is a good thing, at least for me. Well, on the show today, I'll be having a fantastic personality joining us, but I have to say a very big thank you to the space in which we're in. Today, we're shooting from Apartamento Hotel, formerly Crown Apartamento, here in Airport Residential, and they've been so accommodating allowing us to invade this space. I also have to say a very big thank you to R. Louis for my outfit and first choice for my hair. You know, it takes a village to look this good. My Santa hat from Santa himself. Call me Miss Claus, at least, for this festive period. And um, you know what? We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, I'll be revealing my amazing guest to you. You're tuning into Hall of Fame with yours truly, AJ Sapon, right here on City TV. Now, my guest is someone I'm really excited to interview. I have loved his music for the longest time. His army, ladies and gentlemen, is one that rivals none other. He is um, a phenomenal artist who does conscious music and also allows us to dance to it. He is a multiple award-winning artist. His fan base rallies from Ghana all the way through to China and back and everything else inclusive. He's a fantastic individual who's very deep and knowledgeable on all things music, art, and even the world. My guest today is someone you have to have to listen to. And my guest is coming up right now. In the blogs, I've been on these tours. Back home right now, I need directions to yours. Your perfection and flaws, infectious and more. My eye gets, I don't go rest yet. Trap me with your claws, you're missed. Understood, you can't be misunderstood. You're so clear, I'm your Frank Underwood. Your needs, I won't undermine. Never put them under mine. Soon come, darling, I'll be on top, down the line. And I mean that shit. I ain't say it just a rhyme. Don't say off you and say it's just a line. I cry we day, you know, say your boy for grind. No fit stop the time, but run it to stop signs. You the bell, and I know. They pick up sometimes, but baby girl, sick of you. I see the sunshine. So when it's overcast, make you know they over vex. I'll be back. And ladies and gentlemen, my guest is none other than the man from a very long line of influential people, the one and only Manifest. <laughs> I'm really excited. Thank you. It was, it's, quite, it's, it was it's, quite the intro. It wasn't know. really. I had to look I around. Hope, I, ho I hope I did you justice because there's, there's a whole lot more I could have added, you know. Yeah, I had to look yeah. around to check to see if I was the same <laughs> person you were <laughs> But it's nice to have you here. Thank welcome, you. welcome, welcome. So today we'll break bread. Yeah. I'll try and get you a little drunk on wine. Wonderful. And then, you know, we can, we'll have a conversation. I, I have a good tolerance. Let me warn you. Damn it. I was hoping... But you yeah. never know. Maybe it's the amount of wine you get. So sometimes if you drink a whole lot mm. in a short amount of time, you can spill more. You would have to turn water to wine before that would happen. And, and that is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas, you get you Christmas. Anything yeah, can yeah. happen. But yeah. welcome. Uh, Thank you. So let's start it off from music. Mm -hmm. did you, when did you realize that music was what I wanted to do commercially? Um, I still haven't realized that. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just, um, we're just, we're just I, right now. No, not freestyling. I just think mm -hmm. um, they got to a point where I realized that it was beyond a passion. It was mm -hmm. something that I feel, felt I could use to make a difference in more than just my life. Okay. So at that point, I decided to then figure out what to do about it to make sure that it's sustainable or that it works. So it's never really because it was a commercial ambition like mm -hmm. this is how I'm going to make a living. But once I decided to pursue the passions further, I knew that, yeah, then it's a responsible adult that I am. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the way to make it work, yes. At, w at what point in time was this? Was this uh, at very early on in life? Was this after school? At what point did you say, you know what, I think that is going to be my career? I was a late bloomer, so I'll say 
just after college okay. or just about the time and that and that was my fucking the road moment because either go and get a nice nine to five job, job which will not allow you to do anything in terms of your passions truly or or, or kind of uh, I still got a job but not one that would keep me away from music at the okay. time um, so I think it was around that time I was definitely a late bloomer yeah. all right so how did music start for you uh, what was that point were mm-hmm. you some people start from church mm-hmm. uh, where did it start from you no, my dear, it's not just at all. <laughs> I think it just started from living in, in Ghanaian society mm. the normal way. So hearing music everywhere, funerals, weddings, outdoors. And then uh, hearing a young also, hearing people like Kony Mo Young mm. because of my grandfather. Um, and then hearing reggae music everywhere, it's blurring in bars. Um, and then hearing hip hop and mm. being captivated by it, so I think it was a process where I was. The more I got exposed to music and the deeper I dived into it, I was. I really loved it. I would f- do everything to find an empty cassette to record, you know, what I really Patra or, uh, or Shabarangs or something, mm-hmm. you know. So I put an effort. I really knew that I was. I was afflicted by this this thing called music. And you needed to get Sorry. it out and put it to I the I needed world. to get it out. So, I mean, by the first time I started writing anything that resembled songs or raps, I think I was probably around 13. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I still didn't know. There was no way. I was I was, I was too afraid to, to see a life in which I could be something called a full-time musician. It was, oh. it was so far out of reach. It was very far. <laughs> Why was it so wow. far out of reach? Um, were, were there certain expectations? No, nah, it wasn't that. I mean, it's just that I think I wasn't a, I, I wasn't an unaware child. Mm. So I was, I was, uh, I was not smitten by fame, mm. especially local fame. Right. So I, I was well aware that the likelihood of making a living doing music, at least from time before. Look shaky, you know. It looked like something that it's, it's people, somebody's hobby, and they're you know they're playing around with it. Mm. So I, I think that's why it's important those who came before us, like the Reggie Rockstones, because I think when Reggie began rapping, was when it, the idea of a Ghanaian rapper even made sense to me, because mm. before that it was just so far 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 fetched. So I think it was a process for me to really see myself being able to be a full-time musician, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. How would you describe your style of music? Authentic, original, Mm. unapologetic, transformative. (laughs) (laughs) And was Ghana the first place you thought, you know what, I'm going to do music and in Ghana? No, no. So you considered doing music in, in another part of the world? I, I began my career in the U.S., actually. Mm. So what led to you saying, you know what, Ghana is where, or Ghanaian music industry is where I want to make my mark? It wasn't, the industry didn't lead me back to Ghana. No, it was what just, is? I. this is where I saw myself making a life. Okay. So that's what led me back here, because I never left to not come back. So, okay. So the Ghana music industry is just, it was an accident, I fell into it. It was, it was a bailer trap I fell into. You understand? So, um, because I also believe that I also, my career also happened at a time where there's a potential to actually occupy different spaces. You know, you can be an artist that can be between London, South Africa, and Ghana easily if you make it an intentional effort to be. Because the reality of it now is actually if you're an artist stuck in Ghana, it's not a wise decision. Yeah, yeah. You, you might have to explore. And it's not just now. It's been like this for, for eons. People think Fela was stuck in Nigeria or other people, Ebo Taylor, uh, A.B. Krenzel, C.K. Man. No, a lot of those people. Some of them even recorded their albums in Hollywood, yeah. literally, in London. CBC was not even based in Ghana for the most part. So, yeah, so it wasn't a Ghana music industry decision as much as a life decision mm. to come back to Ghana. But what are your thoughts on the Ghanaian music industry? It's trash. I'm kidding. 
Uh, Although you're too sensitive. Uh, but uh, in uh, general, do you think it's developing the way it should? It's helping out. It's it's creating a thriving environment for artists. Not yet. It's it's in the process, mm. but not yet. Not at all. I think artists artists are doing much more work than other parts of the ecosystem. Mm. If you really want to look at it. I mean, a clear example is if you look at December in Ghana, how many artists are putting up their own concerts? It's, it's, it's interesting. It's, yes. It looks like a, a, revol- a some revolution going yeah. on that everyone is now doing. Yes, their own. and then block parties. I, I used to do the Madina block parties, Samini, that's Samini first, yeah. etc. There's so much in the ecosystem that is created by creatives themselves not by anything else, other infrastructure being built to allow people to thrive. Mm. And if you look at all the names I mentioned, if we had, without the kind of stubbornness and, notor- and having some notoriety to use to back the stubbornness, it wouldn't be possible. Mm. So imagine a younger artist who has not really been able to get so much shine, but it's good, might even have a niche audience, you know. They, 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 can't, they, they can't thrive. Mm. It's a sink. Also. It's, this is for the... You have to be at the top to make for, for 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 the industry to make sense here, and that's that's kind of tragic because you have to you have to take care of and develop the entire ecosystem from bottom to top. Like and uh, so we we still have there's a lot lacking and there's a lot more to be done. So if you could change anything, what would it be? Easy. What you mean anything in life? In, in no in the, in the in the industry. Okay, two things. Mm. I know you said anything, so it sounds like one, but I'll take two things. One, the quick and easy one, which is the royalty system, is it's, it's, we talk about this thing too much. It just needs to be fixed, enforced, fixed, automatic. It's something that should work. And, you know, because right now, the only way artists think of making money is mainly shows. Mm. That's tragic. Yeah. There have to be multiple streams of income. You, you, you create your art to be able to have that. Uh, number two, performance spaces. We need a whole bunch of performance spaces. Oh, yeah. oh! I think the food is coming. Amazing. Yeah, it is. Yay. Yeah, you see, I'm going, to, I'm going to act like an Italian and be like, yeah, hey, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, 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 I think, <laughs> so I think we need performance spaces, you know, all over the place. I want to be, it should be easy for, quote and unquote, an upcoming artist who's beginning to get a buzz to release an album and go to all 10 regions and do a tour and just plug into, like, the different venues there, that live venues there that make that happen. So those two things I would change because they are simple things. They're not complicated at all. But uh, uh, and it's interesting because on the day that uh, some event person doesn't think you're hot enough, and that means that artist's stream of income has been cut. Yeah. But coming to you and your beginning in the Ghana music industry, doing a style of music that is un- was uncommon at that particular point in time because we were more into commercial beats and mm-hmm. danceable tunes, but you decided to use do a lot more play on words and all that. How was your reception in the industry in the beginning? Uh, it was always curious to me because friends I had or people I had met would say things like, yo, you know Charlie Manifest? What you're doing is dope, Baganians, Baganians, yeah. Baganians. So I always laughed because I think, it's also curious to me that people think they're the only people who like nice things. <laughs> That's true. You understand? Yeah. So, so I always disagreed with that. But I understood what sentiment they had, the fear of the fact that we tend to like one way familiar style and we stick mm-hmm. to it. And it's, it's easy. They say life in Africa is hard, so we just want to be mindless about it. Whatever it is. But I, I, I've not believe, I never believed it to be true. I looked at all the... All the people we call legends in Ghana, whether it's Kujenshi, Amachi, De, 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 but these are people who, who've always had su- su- substance and quality. True. So why, why do we believe that when somebody has substance and quality, it's too much for Ghanaians? <laughs> yeah. That's actually It is true. a weird thing, you know, whether it's Nanam Pedu, everybody, you know. Could they, it be our generation? No, I, I, I think, I think, um, I think it's a mind trick that some gatekeepers have used on the people. Okay. Oh, it has to be done. It has to be this BPM. One thing that I really, I always observe the shifts. Around the time it's the easy and juice started making music. There were a lot of fast beats. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. 
it was post Azonto but still they were, yeah. the Azonto fastness was still there. And these guys came in with some very slow mid tempo uh, skin tight all this yeah. stuff. and it, it changed like a DJ would probably have told some some of them that now nah, this one I can't mix it yeah, in with yeah, it, whatever you, but you, you, find a way. you you can't you you can't uh, you can't listen to that so to answer your question uh, uh, long story short <laughs> short story <laughs> long brother um, yeah I think there was a lot of um, hesitation on many people's part to believe that it would, it would work even if they loved it. You know, Maybe but not everyone will. yeah, and and everybody didn't have to, but I believe that a good number of people would, mm -hmm. a majority more than they believe. But I realized then that at that time that then it's going to be a slow grind, or well, I'll grind it out. Yeah. Hmm. Did you consider quitting at any point in time? Every day. <laughs> well, not every day. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> yeah, for a few times you would be, you would feel inclined to. Yeah, no. A few times I'd w I'd wake up and be like, what am I doing? I mean, you need, and that, but that's what that's how you build resilience. When you have either feelings or actual rock bottoms that you hit, or dissatisfaction, strong dissatisfaction, thinking, "Why am I?" I mean, I think part of me, my frustration was not in an audience reception of my thing, or the fact that I wasn't getting opportunities. Because note, I'd been, I had recorded with Eric Abadu, played with Damon Albarn. Mm -hmm toward Europe and then I, before I came back to Ghana. So I already had a sense of the fact that what I was doing was viable. So I wasn't necessarily like, I wasn't here to build my confidence. I was here to keep building my career. <laughs> so, but then the other things in terms of like how people deal with you, the disrespect. I mean, sometimes people just think we are entertainers like throw a coin and then jump yeah. and you see how high <laughs> <laughs> you know so i think those are the kind of things that would make me think why am i wasting my time yeah. it's, it's not worth my time because i just see myself small <laughs> you should. And so i think those kind of moments yeah so I, I definitely i felt that way um but it's part of it it's part of the resilience thing and any serious creative who's super passionate about their work always feels that way like sometimes like is it worth it mm -hmm. but then you you know it is <laughs> And that I totally believe it. So we're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking a bit more with Manifest, going into more details about his music and definitely Breaking Bread. All this and more coming up on Hall of Fame. <laughs> You're tuned into Hall of Fame right here on City TV with yours truly, AJ Sapon. We're shooting here at the Crown Apartments, formerly Crown Apartmental, now known as Apartmental Hotel, here at Airport Residential. Thank you very much. Why? My favorite thing in the entire world, <laughs> apart from shooting, that is. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, this is a condom peak. Okay. Thank so you very much. Sounds good. It's very nice. Please. Right? Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Alrighty, so here at Crown Apartmental, if you're thinking uh, nice rooms, big rooms at a very affordable price, you should definitely think Crown Apartmental. I, think, I feel so bougie right now. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. It's good. Thank you. So as you guys feel all jealous Thank at you. home, I, I am. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. See. At this point, we, we, we must be fancy. Yeah. At this point, we've got to too, but yeah, it's... Uh, Lovely to have a conversation, and we are having a conversation with the one and only M. Dodotido, aka Manifest. But Manifest, the M. Okay, let's start with that. <laughs> how did the name Manifest come about, and how did the moniker M. Dodotido get formed? Um, the name Manifest came about through. I didn't have a rap name for the longest time. Okay. Right. It came through, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> it came through um, working on a rap, actually. Mm. 
And so I just stumbled upon it. I was like, yes, this is great. This is it, eh? But it was going to be a nightmare calling myself just manifest because if you type manifest in Google, <laughs> you can imagine all the things you see. You see all the things you see. You see all the things you see. You see all the things you see. Yes. So I, was, I had to differentiate myself. So I put it there. I like the idea of the dots. Mm. I put the dots to differentiate it. And over time, the bill, you know, other monikers came from me being M dot. M dot 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 actually funny story. The first time M dot 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 was actually said on a record was a song called Life the Jump. Ha! Huh. Life the Jump. Yeah, it was Kevin Jones featuring One Love and Myself. So at the and at the beginning of of the this thing, uh, One Love said. This is one of the people. M. Dot 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 or one of the people. Then, then it was Kristen No Boy. Uh huh. Big up to him for that. Uh, and then M. Diggity came on, and then uh, Festive. Like, Charlie, the they, they, keep, they keep running. I think, I think, I think God MC is running right now. Yes, God. Uh, uh, yes. That's the, that's the God MC. I hear that more than M. Dot 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 Dot. And the song <laughs> that came with it was actually pure fire, to be honest. Thank but coming into it, I, I saw a post at some point that you said you were you use music to fight depression. Uh, at least an article that I saw online about you. And uh, what was this depressive period in your life that you used music to? Well, let, let, me, let me be accurate about okay. what was said. Okay. You know, you, you keep going. <laughs> um, I think I was asked if I've, I've been depressed. Mm. I'm like, well, we are prone to depression, and I know being in the dumps. But I found a coping mechanism, one of it being music, because... Mm. There's a lot of catharsis, like letting out a lot of stuff. Of course. Um, I think I can, there are certain time periods in my life in which it was very difficult for me, many di- different reasons. Yeah. And that tends to let you kind of, you, before you realize, you can spiral down very easily or very quickly. Mm. And so, I mean, uh, uh, this is your calamari still, uh, that is um, octopus. Okay, okay, thank you very, very much, nice sir. Ooh. As a starter. <laughs> and we have uh, gambas here. Okay. Which is a uh, prawns. All right. All right, love it. So, thank you so yeah, much, sir. Yeah. So it's, all about, it's all seafood. Okay, uh, yes, we, we, we like seafood. So I'm going to get you your side order. All right, thank yeah. you so much. Ooh. Fancy. <laughs> Yeah, Charlie, Charlie, you know, all we know is food, eh? I recall there was a, a song on my last album, mm. Nowhere Cool, a song actually called Now Here Cool, in which I kind of detailed some of that, those difficult periods. And I think it was in the second verse, I was like, at the guy when my uncle KB died, ground. Uh, uh, anyway, I went through three deaths that happened in the family, all three this funerals. Is your side order. Thank you, sir. And we have our local pepper. I like local pepper. I like local pepper. Nice, nice. We go with the fried rice. Thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Thank we you. appreciate have it. Have a good appetite. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Definitely, that one yeah. is it's confirmed. Mm-hmm. If you see food like this, but again, we have to say a very big thank you to our apartmental hotel uh, here in Airport Residential, giving us a whole spread of seafood and side accompaniment to the video exclusive. But coming back to music. Being used to fight depression in some way. So, yeah, you, so you detailed all of that. Yeah, I detailed it. Missing three funerals in the family. Wow. I mean, those kind of things can get to you and all sorts of things. But even being able to speak about it in music is like therapy. So that's what I was, I was pointing to. And a lot of artists, that's what we do. If some girl breaks your heart. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you use We're it. Like sing a you song, choose. you know, yeah. instead of. Instead of going to do something drastic, we'll sing a song about it. Okay. okay so that's, that's okay. why I was trying to get at it. Um, and, and also knowing that artists live a life in which there's a lot, little, little guarantees. Mm-hmm. You create your own pension. You create your own health care, whatever. Okay. Nobody's, you, you're sick, sick days off for who? <laughs> Where are you cheating? So it comes with these challenges of, People sometimes feeling like, why am I doing all this? So that's that's where the depressive states sometimes. But it's, okay. I, I don't want, it's not a blanket thing. Depression is not something, it's, I think sometimes now it's, it's a topic people speak about a lot. So people are just throwing things left and yeah. right. But yeah. it's, it's a very people specific and it's also very, but we have to be quite aware and, and uh, acknowledge it to be able to deal with it. Mm. 
coming to your lineage, so mm -hmm. you come from a long line of accomplished Ghanaians, uh, your father, your grandfather, and the whole nine yards. Did they ever give you some sort of pressure about your own career and how you wanted it to form? Not at all. I mean, if you think about it, my, uh, my grandfather is a musician, mm -hmm. he's a composer, so I think it, it's not even as far-fetched as people want to think it is. Yeah. Um, now, no, so the short answer is no. Okay. There was no, there was not necessary pressure okay. because also I also just always, always did instead of ask permission. Okay. I just do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Re only way. Creating your own rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If you do, I mean, Ghanaian adults tend to prefer if you do. They yeah. say what? They said uh, um, it's better to what? Ask for forgiveness and to ask for permission. For permission. So <laughs> I think that's the that's, that's the vibe. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And you have referred to us at least again. Coming back, I'm now addressing a few headlines I've seen about you. You refer to yourself as the best rapper of our generation. Did you not <laughs> think it would come off as conceited or cocky in some way? And what was your basis for describing yourself as the best rapper? Did I say this uh, in a song or in an interview? Uh, well, the headline says, Manifest describes himself as best rapper in our generation. Hey, you don't believe headlines. <laughs> hey, you. Headlines. Ghanaians and headlines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. I think anybody who knows me or has heard me speak know that. Even though I have a confidence, I think arrogance is not necessarily my thing. Mm. But, I mean... If I am rapping, you probably hear me in a very self-assured way talk about how slaughter all these MCs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if somebody asks me, do I think I'm the best rapper? I mean, I'll probably uh, use some hyperbole or make a joke out of it. But the truth of it all is, all that doesn't matter. It's about what impact you have on people. Mm. And though that will make that decision now and later on. So whatever we say, the the self acclaimed thing it will only last so long <laughs> <laughs> speaking mm -hmm. of self acclaim and mm -hmm. competition mm -hmm. um, I, I believe last year there was a whole social media uproar about you having a big beef with soccer yeah. songs came out about it and were big about each other I'm going to disappoint you it was actually two years ago <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's only so recent, but okay. So two years ago, uh, there was a whole showdown, and I, oh, I've always wanted to ask: mm -hmm. Was that all for publicity, or was that an honest issue of uh, two titans clashing? It was an honest competitive rivalry, differences in how we not think about things. No, no, not for the camera. It's like boxing. Okay. It was more like boxing, uh, and at the end, everybody shakes hands at the end of the fight. <laughs> When the ring, you want, but in the ring, you want to kill each other. <laughs> okay, okay, okay yeah. that makes sense. So I that think that's sense. what it was, you know. Mm -hmm. And then now looking at this year's uh, whole showdown between um, Chakodi and Shatawale, do you think it is, as it was with you, uh, an issue of just two people hushing it out through music and tweets and interviews and a whole night yards, or do you think it was probably for publicity? You know me, I don't worry so much about that because only they will know. Mm. Unless I'm involved, I wouldn't know. So <laughs> I take it for what it is and enjoy it where it's to be enjoyed <laughs> for the most part. And, you know, we, we, we can't be hypocritical about it. We love a competitive rivalry mm. in every aspect. Sports, music, it even comes into religion. True. People compare pastors, whatever kind of thing. True. So we, we can't put our arms up and, and act like everything has gone to down the drains when two musicians go at it. Mm -hmm. So as to their motivations, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I just, I just try and look at it as to how these things can help push things forward, whether in terms of ideas or whatever it is it can help push forward. Because that's the point, point of it, because either... It inspires you to make better music, you know, it inspires you to stand by something. In my case, for instance, standing by the so-called being Afrocentric or whatever, standing by something, or, or, or inspires the fans to 
be more excited and want to to take the 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 the, the artists they support seriously. Mm -hmm. So. If you inspire something that helps a positive progress, then that's absolutely fine. Okay. If it's just kind of bitterness, personal, whatever kind of thing that is, who doesn't do anything for anybody, then it's a waste of time. <laughs> we, we're too grown. Time no day. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, hashtag. <laughs> mm -hmm. Two of them. <laughs> now, you have been quite vocal about issues that go on in, uh, in everyday Ghana. You recently spoke about um, land garden. Uh, have you in any way encountered that? I was, um, short and says no, but I was actually listening to City FM and hearing okay. people calling in. Speak about it, yeah. It's it was so ridiculous, and I'm like, yo, I remember this thing when I was young, Kuku Ninja and all these yes. things, and this is still going on. So I thought it was ridiculous. I'm like, yo, Ghana, we, there's the, there's, <laughs> why can't we just root out certain things? You know? So I think I, I spoke about it because it's one of those things that exists and is commonplace, but should it be commonplace? It shouldn't, though. No, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, in moments like that, there's no need to keep you, silent. You know? And you have been very conscious uh, what is your analysis looking around of Ghana today? How would you describe or what are your views on the state of the nation, if you have it? Well, to begin, I'll say one of our greatest challenges as a nation right now, not at this moment, but right now in this generation is we are ridiculously partisan. Mm. A national agenda is really a political party agenda. So because of that, any level of moving forward that goes beyond petty beef. <laughs> See, this is the worst beef we have here, actually, the political sphere. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really can draw us back. We can take 10 steps forward and then 12 steps backwards. So I think that is the bigger problem, you know. When I was young, I remember there was Vision 2020. 2020 yeah. is here, pretty much. I'm wondering how much of that has, sure. has been achieved. Because when I was young, I thought it was far away, 2020. Now we're here. So I think that's part of it. There's, we have to create an environment that allows young, innovative people to thrive. Entrepreneurs, creative, etc. Instead, this country puts a lot of stumbling blocks, you know, mm -hmm. even registering an LLC or something is, True. can be long. We have to do all of that. We have to, we have to not go into politics to chop, but to make a difference. We have to um, see beyond those very primal, party, tribal, those kind of things. We always have disagreements. Mm -hmm. Let's realize it. But, you know, I think a wise person in my family once told me, at this rate, if we are not careful, one day you're going to buy Kinke, and before the Kinke seller sells it to you, you say which party are you <laughs> and decides which ball or whatever they can give you. You know, so we have we have to we have to kind of rein back that kind of thinking. Where right now, if you were to give a critique, somebody is sitting there thinking, "What party yeah. is she in?" It has nothing to do with the truth of any matter, and, or somebody would defend something that's terribly wrong because it's their party power. Yeah. Do you think politics will be for you in some years to come? Would you consider it? No. Why not? I think my power, not my power, I think my, um, my talents and my influence are best used in other ways. Mm. And, um, <coughs> I don't think I, I can suffer fools enough to be a politician. <laughs> Um, I'm sure <laughs> we have to go through it, but that will be a long conversation for another day. Um, I think a lot of times part of our problem is implementing or enforcing the rule of law. Yeah. You know, there's always a way around, unfortunately. So, I'm looking for what's the discipline to 
pretty much um to pretty much implement what we all have agreed as policy or law. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we recall not so many years ago and us um did that documentary on the the film on the judges and um one thing that was horrifying that we saw was not that we did not have laws in place to prevent certain things, but they were being blatantly not followed by the people be, who yeah. are supposed to hold us all accountable. <laughs> but that was horrifying and terrifying yeah. at the same time. So I think before we start looking at the things that are not working, we have to look not before, but we have to simultaneously look at the things that are not working mm. and the things that work but are not being implemented yeah. or that we find a way around. So I think that's the broad, a broad stroke of <laughs> what the problems I feel are. Okay. You know? yeah. okay. I think Bernard Avila will be more apt to get into the details. Mm. <laughs> Bernard for president. I'm seeing something. <laughs> Would you consider running for position in the music industry? Music president or something like that sort of thing? What bring change to the industry the way you want to? No, not at all. I have some plans of things I'm working on that will make me too busy. Mm. Not, think, not just music things, but... Because you can off plans. I saw that earlier this year you um, visited Tidal. What were some of the prospects that came out of that? I think, um, to be transparent, I think one of the things that I learned from that was that there's a lot of interest in people who create dope content. Mm. So with me, I think part of what caught the attention was the, the, my music videos yeah. and, you know, and potential of even creating exclusive video content for them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I think... There was that conversation and then me being now as space as somebody who's now has a certain influence within my music community and can be a curator so that's how i published two playlists for them because mm. then i could be the pulse i could aside from just making music i can tell you that yo this is dope this is what's next up this is um a diverse look at ghana now okay so those are some of the conversations we had so what are your dream collaborations? Who are the ones that you would love to do a collaboration with if you're an opportunity? Chronics, Damien Mali, um, Kendrick, okay. Asha. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know about dream, but <laughs> the word dream collaboration. But these are these are names that come up. Um, then there are people who are not that known. There's a guy called Shmino. Okay. Um, I want to collaborate to Konimo. To Konimo Hala. <laughs> but um. who are you working on? So what, um, 2019 is coming. I mean, it's here. You, it, it's here. Hmm. It's here. No, it's practically yeah, we're like a few days into a new year. What plans have been put in place for brand manifest? What projects? You mentioned some projects that are going to be busy. What are some of these projects? At least, what can you tell us about some of these projects? The ones I can mention are the musical ones. <laughs> <laughs> I have two albums in the pipeline. One is a collaborative one. One is my next one. It's called GMT. This is the reason why. We're kind of subtitling manifesto with this GMT Live. Ah, so. right. Okay, okay, okay. So it's giving a, a bit of a snippet of what we can expect for next year. Exactly. Okay. So I think that's big. Those are two, two major things I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on. Um, trying to work on a project that is a, is a bit of a tour, but it's a bit unconventional. Okay. So for, uh, yeah. Unconventional in what way? In terms of, if I say this idea, they'll steal it <laughs> and try and do it before I do it. So unfortunately, I know so how you guys are going Yeah, so we'll just keep it, we'll keep it like that. Yeah. Just unconventional. Just we'll have certain ingredients 
that the regular music tour doesn't. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I don't understand all that. Yeah. And let's come to manif manifestivity. Yes. Yes. I've seen the trust of you. Manifestivities, yeah. yeah. The name itself is, is, sub <laughs> is, is subject to change. It's a very activities. <laughs> Um, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 Tell me about that festivities. Well, I know there are two amazing artists on it, Simi and Burna Boy. No, all the artists are amazing. Yeah. If you're amazing. If you're amazing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let, me, let me qualify. Uh, artists from outside Ghana okay. that yeah. are amazing. That I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them live in concert. Yeah. A fear I absolutely adore. She's really lovely. Uh, and a whole lot of artists that are on there. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what we should be expecting. Technically tomorrow, the 23rd yeah. of December. It's going to be an epic night. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be one of the best musical nights of 2018. No jokes. Look at the lineup. Burner Boy, mm -hmm. Simi, mm -hmm. Chrissy Atha, Ifia, yeah. B for Bona, and then some surprises to creep in mm -hmm. for good measure. But it's a well-curated night. What we've tried to do with manifestivities is to let it expand beyond me to become a night of great music. Mm -hmm. Of, like as you tried to say in the beginning of yeah. great artists that will will make you want to leave home and have an experience that one day you throw your children <laughs> or if you are old one have an experience one day you throw your grandchildren <laughs> you know so um, that's what we're going for and so far we've seen that kind of response I think people are excited they can see from the lineup that this is one it's not just people jumping up and down it's going to be really great music it's a great venue unique venue um so I'm excited. Like I'm anxious. I'll tell you that because I want, I want, I want everything to go well. Yes. Like, what the, let's let's <laughs> let's start some time. Nobody should be late. So what time is it gonna start? Well, six. That's when the rap battle and the DJ battle starts, and okay. the performance starts at eight thirty. Okay. okay. You know, okay. so I want to make it an early night. But go on. So rap battle. So the opportunity for underground artists and people will be showcased. Isn't it yeah, it won't be. Uh, there will be a couple of people that will get the chance to showcase, but oh. they, you know, they, but we're not. It's not the kind of night where you have like twenty artists. <laughs> there, you know. We don't do those. It needs to be curated, and you experience those artists at least. So that's why we we put the names of the main ones yeah, who there. you're coming to experience, and the people that might be catching raises, they won't be there for long, but they. For those who are there super they'll early at the six tone, thirty, they'll yeah. set the tone as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And is this going to replace the block parties? Because at least for those in the Madina area, they you, they know you for that, and you are capable of shutting down like mm -hmm. the entire the street. Yeah. <laughs> you are the street. Like, the entire the entire part of uh, mm -hmm. of Madina. And is this going to be the new thing that manifests people now, or will it be running concurrently with the block parties? You know, they're supposed to be always running concurrently, but um, the challenges of financing some of these things has not made them happen. So every year there should be a block party and a manifestivity. So that's the plan. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> you know, because they both satisfy different audiences and do different things yeah. and different vibes. Okay. This one, end of year celebrations. You've had a hard year, you've had a great year, yeah. you want to end it well, you want to go to my festivities, you want to go to that Boko Marina, you want to sit on either your table or the chair, whichever it is that you decide to get, and then you want to have a good time here, the best music that you've been loving and wanting to see, like, the whole year. So that's the vibe. Boko Marina, mm -hmm. what left the selection of that venue? You know, I, the, the revelation of that venue came by going to an Azuma fight night. Not Azuma fight, mm -hmm. but fight night that he had organized. And I will tell you, I couldn't imagine that we have this, this really great venue that is being used for just boxing <laughs> fights. I said, no, no way. No. We, must do we, can, we, can, we can do music here. I mean, we, we all know we lack interesting venues, and mm. that one is a dope venue. It's lit, literally and figuratively. I, mean, okay. I like the arena feel. It's round. It's got great parking. Okay. It's easily accessible. You know, two minutes away from ICGC, a few minutes away from Kolibu, uh, in terms of landmarks. Um, I thought, well, yo, this is a great venue. It needs, it needs to cease. We need to do manifestivities here. It will make people enjoy the music more. It's not, it's not enclosed. You're not going to be sweaty and <laughs> feeling stuffy. You know how it is. Yeah, if a whole yeah, AJ is yeah. coming, she's not coming here to. 
in her best dress first in so person yeah. a Sunday best for you to make her feel stuffy, you know. So that's why we chose the arena. I think I think it's it's great, it's a dope arena. I think for those who've never seen it, they'll be pleasantly surprised that we have this really dope venue. I mean there'll be lots of every I mean those who I know Ghanaians you hear book and some people are like, What's happening here? <laughs> no, it's a great venue, lots of security like in any other place, mm-hmm. safe, it's it will, be, it will be lovely. Okay, yeah. and it's happening tomorrow night. So if mm-hmm. you have a few more hours to be able to grab your own tickets, how, how much? 120 pair. Ah, oh, and But you, you're a big boy, so you probably get a table. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, we'll be, we'll be balling like that, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's drinks on the table. Yeah. I, I got you, man. Actually, mm-hmm. holler at me. Hashtag. Yeah. Hall of Fame, I will take you there. Hall of Fame tables. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go on a quick break. When we get out back, we'll be talking some more with Manifest and going to my favorite part, that is the game. Stay tuned. This is Hall of Fame. <laughs> The Hall of Fame right here on City TV. I'm having a bite and well, actually not a bite, a whole meal with Manifest right here on the show. Special thanks to our Apartmental Hotel who are hosting us so lavishly. I don't actually want to go to my own home at this particular point in time. And you can find them at Airport Residential. Think of rooms, think of good food, think of great wine, think Apartmental Hotel. Trust me. You can mention AJ in there, you know, we'll treat you nicer. But <laughs> coming back to the conversation. And we're going to quickly wrap it up and okay. move on to the next one. But you tweeted about love recently, talking about... I did? And apparently. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there was a tweet on love. And, or, or at least what to do about love or uh, how you behave in love or something like that. I know it passed my eye like... Yeah, she, like that. She, and this, this one. But are you in love? Always. Are you dating? Or are you single? I'm dating somebody called... Do you want to know the name? I want to know the name. First name, Nanya. Uh-huh. Last name business. <laughs> 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 I don't believe I fell. <laughs> Darn it! I always feel like you're gonna give me a scoop. I was gonna be like, yeah, you heard it first. Yeah, like, yeah, you heard it first. Hall of Fame. Yeah. None of my business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so rude and funny at the same time. I know it's paid you. This one is paid me for. Yeah, people, people should worry about the music. See, I say so much in my music, I don't feel the need to, to, to talk more about those things. Mm, mm. You know, I think the people who are, who are more comfortable, you, when you go on Instagram, you see that <laughs> they do their thing. So you don't even have to ask them. It will be on Instagram. It's different. We are different. So those that don't keep it on Instagram, on all social media, just like to keep it to themselves. So. Yeah, you know. Mm. You know, you might catch me in the streets. No, but we're on a date <laughs> now, so... <laughs> It seems. You know what I mean? Candles, so, there's wine, so there's food. next thing you know, bloggers tomorrow, <laughs> Monday, I mean, yeah, what's up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a friendly dinner, you know, there's, there's, there's interview dinner. Well, there's... you're afraid your boyfriend is going to catch us. Which boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I can publicly say that. <laughs> but then I don't know if someone's dating me. <laughs> yeah, that day too, but you don't know it That's funny. I'm going to use that next time. Wow. Wow. Please, that joke. <laughs> okay, now, now you are, you are catching yeah, yourself. Yeah. You jokes, Repercussions, you, you know. Banter, you get me. You get me. All the diaspora wants to be like, you know, in it. In it, you get me. Yeah, get me. But... Going back into, I'm going to play a game with you. No um, problem. Very quickly, but before that, I like there's a thing I like to do called like random. So I randomly asked you a few things, and you have to tell me the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I will start. So first thing. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's, let's do this. I, I I think I'll refer to my phone for this particular one. So okay. first thing that comes into your head, sweaty. Athlete. Akufuado. <laughs> president. Mahama. Ex-president. <laughs> Natural. 
Pa? Natural. Miss V. <laughs> Twitter. I was going to say a word, but I wasn't good. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> it's G. G. It is in Kwa. <laughs> Instagram. Lurking. Mm, manifest. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Needed. Uh, hit, hit, hit. Mm. <laughs> Wine. Dying. Mm. <laughs> I like the way this man thinks. And finally, God MC. The greatest. <laughs> I like, I like, I like. I'm going to go into the game part. So mm. this was just by the way. Randoms. Mm. <laughs> so the games part, starting off with uh, the very first one. So we're going to do general questions, and then we'll move on to the flags. So this the interesting part about it. I'm curating results. The Ish. celebrity at the end of the season with the most or the best answer. So the one who's been able to answer the most, no cash. A weekend stay at a beach villa. Where is that? At Nignano. So it's called East Haven Beach Resort. Okay. So the celebrity will it be. It did be. Because if you know it be, then I won't try and win. If you know it be, I won't try and win. No, like you literally, you'll be having dinner by the beach. Like it'll be okay. set up. Like it's the whole How much is it a night? I'll get back to you on that. Okay, but cool. <laughs> no, but it's free. It's on us. Yeah, I know, but I want it's to know free, because free. sometimes you get an indication of, <laughs> of how good it is by how much it is a night. No, we'll talk about it. We talk, yeah. But okay, no, then let me get myself yeah, 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 ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My zoom zoom flow. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> right. So start with the oh first God, one. Oh, God, don't disgrace me. <laughs> <laughs> this is like general knowledge, current affairs, some Sorry, weird it's mixture. It's going to be a problem. I hope you like sports. Anyway, starting off, who is the Speaker of Parliament now? I've forgotten. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it. Mm. <laughs> okay. Next one. <laughs> Which country won the FIFA World Cup this year? This year. Um, France. Okay, okay. Ding, 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 ding. Who composed the poem Phenomenal Woman? My Angelo. It is, actually. Uh, who is <laughs> known as Killer? In the hit Ghanaian TV series, Things We Do For Love. No pusher, killer. Yes. Was it Majid? It was Majid, yeah. actually, yeah. yeah. And the FIFA World Cup is to football, while Davis Cup is to... Tennis. Ah, uh, this one is smart, this one is smart. <laughs> Give him another glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, you got that part, right? At least minus one. But yeah, I'm gonna go into the I yeah, 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 to me. Yeah, Parliament, I yeah. kind of I dug them. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but going back into the flags, so here I'm giving you or showing you some flags and our flags, flags, national no. flags. <laughs> no, I refuse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> show me. Let's let's try the first one. Let's okay. Okay, so going into the first one. You see, my, you got Cameroon on his chair. I mean, I can't okay, remember. So she key in both answers. I don't know. My, can my producer? Okay, you know, let's key in both answers because it's manifest. I will take both. So which one is it? Yeah, the flags there. Senegal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was close, but it wasn't close no. enough. <laughs> it wasn't close enough. Oh, Charlie. So that, because I've next... never had a girlfriend from Senegal. Ah, that's a problem. So that's an issue. If you did, you probably. Anyway, so this is like a flower with stars and stuff. Is this Morocco? I, I, I don't know. It could be. Mm. It could not be. Uh, so let's try Morocco. Mm. I know they are, they are red and white. <laughs> so the flags, they, I know I'm terrible. Like, I, yeah, I won't lie you to you about the flags. Right. And I knew that it was going to be a problem. Okay. So this one is Hong Kong. Oh, that one. Mm. Wow. Wow. I, I still haven't figured it out. Okay, which one is this? It's green, it's white, and it's green. It's not Christmas. It's not. <laughs> I actually look like the flag. Right? It's Nigeria. Mm. It is Nigeria. Matter of fact, I should be going around with the Nigerian flags. Like, 
I literally look at Nigerian flag. Yeah. It's like white and yeah. Anyways, no. moving on to the next one. Canada. Canada. I like you. I like it. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the white people. France. France. It's. It is. It could be. You see this thing with this flag here. Yeah? How that it turns. Yeah. It looks depending different. on. Yeah. I think it's if France. It flips, if it stands horizontal. It's, it's I, I think it's France. It's yeah. either France or one of those French colonies. But it's France. Yeah. Yeah. It's one, one of them. At least it's New York. Oh, Charlie. Least. Some way. <laughs> Please. So it I, is... I, I appear on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Netherlands. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. It, it was close. It wasn't close now. <laughs> it wasn't close enough. I know a lot of people from France. At, at, least, you, at least you got my some. My French some. people, forgive me. For, it's, it's all right. My, so my Dutch hard. people, forgive me too. Yeah. You know. See, the thing, what, however it turns, it changes. So mm. it's not your fault. So the it's, flags there, yeah, uh, it's not my fault. Man. I'm going to change that. 2019 <laughs> goals, no flags. At all. Uh, yeah. I like this. No, song. I won't know flags. Oh, like, you will yeah, know it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So we'll come back in 2019. Yeah, yeah. That one, I'll ace it. Yeah, when the new album is coming. Yeah, straight up. And then we'll talk about flags. And then, and then you ace it. Trust me. I will. I, will. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I might even draw them. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how we call it a wrap on today's amazing edition of Hall of Fame. It's been a pleasure coming your way with the one and only M the God MC Manifest. And the best part about it is you don't have to wait another week for your dose of Hall of Fame. We'll be coming your way every single day during this festive period. So all you have to do is keep your dial locked right here onto the TV every evening. Make a date with Hall of Fame with yours truly, AJ Sabon. And that's about it, making your Christmas even better with your favorite personalities now we have to say a very big thank you to the ones that have made filling our bellies and drinking a whole lot of wine possible it is apartmental hotel located at airport residential and the best part about it you can as well that are visiting our home watching us luxuriate on this food enjoy just as much as possible because they are giving an amazing excellent deal. All you have to do is pack yourself, your loved ones, and come over to Apartmental Hotel because the deal is to die for. Imagine this, a two-bedroom apartment that can uh, accommodate a family of four going for 999 Ghana cities. Yep, 999 Ghana cities. It's like, it's like a wolf deal, and that is all that awaits you along with amazing food, amazing wine, amazing ambience and that's what you get with apartmental hotel so you know what give them a call the number is zero two eight uh, nine one one three six zero 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 three zero three seven seven one seven one two and as well you can email them at reservations at a crown com. find apartmental hotel right here in airport residential and have the very very best of christmas Holidays, courtesy, apartmento, hotel. You can even slide in my name, say AJ stuff. It'll be like, oh, Hall of Fame people, come on in. So trust me, that will even get you some more freebies. And we'll shout out to the man that is Mr. Godfrey. He's been hosting us even uh, incredibly well than even I thought even was even possible. But you know what? Enough talk. Time to get out of your hair. But thank you again for tuning in. We're back again tomorrow with another fantastic edition. Until I come your way again. Take care of yourself and each other.